sinners are worth something to God because there's a celebration. We celebrate what we value. I would never celebrate the finding of a Barbie cone, but my sister would because she valued it. Jesus is saying that God values these people. How do we know? There's a celebration going on. I must remove myself from that scale of sinners. I must stop myself from thinking that there are some that God just doesn't value. That there are some who are on the lower end of that scale who just aren't worth it. Jesus is saying that when one of these sinners comes to the Father, there is more rejoicing. God values sinners. We move forward. We talk about a lost sheep. We talk about a lost coin. And then Jesus gets very personal. And he tells the story of a young man. A young man who wants to leave home. Who wants to leave his father. Who wants to leave his home. Who wants to leave his brother and go out on his own. And he demands his inheritance. And he goes out and he squanders it. We all know the, the parable of the prodigal son. And he goes and he realizes that life outside. That life apart from his father is not what he thought it was. And he's in the, the midst of squall, in the midst of filth. And he spent everything that he had. He had wasted away everything that his father had given him. And he comes back to his father humiliated, saying, if only I could be a servant of my father. I can't even imagine being a son. If I could just be a servant. And yet, his father welcomes him back with open arms. His father sees his son coming and he tells his servants to prepare a celebration. We're going to have a feast. And he welcomes that son back with open arms. The brother, horrified. And he relates to his father all of the travesties of this young man, this brother who had taken, who had demanded his inheritance and then wasted it in decadence. He's not worth it. It's not worth celebrating. It's not worth having him back. This man had made his decisions. This prodigal son should not be welcomed. And the response of the father is this. Luke chapter 15, verse 32. He says to the son that's so upset the father would ever have a celebration for this prodigal son. It was fitting to celebrate and to be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost, but he is found. This son that I cared so much about this one who I was longing for, this one that I love so much, is dead. That father had sacrificed for that son. He had given of himself for that son. That son had taken it. And in the, the eyes of the father, that son was gone. This one who was dead, this one who has been lost, has now been found. This one who was dead is now alive, and we are to celebrate. The son was of so much significance to the father. So much love was held for that son. Despite the sacrifice, despite what he had given of himself, that father could have, have looked at that son, that prodigal son, and had looked him dead in the eyes and said, you wanted to do it on your own? You got it. You wanted to squander everything? Well, congratulations. There is no home for you. 
He could have even looked him in the eyes and said, you can't even be a servant of mine. I don't want to see you. You try to do it on your own. Go ahead and live that life. That certainly was the attitude of the son. But instead, that father welcomed that son back. That father welcomed him back with open arms. Jesus gave his life for sinners. Jesus gave his life for those who have made mistakes out loud. Who are viewed on the lower end of that scale for the tax collectors, for the sinners, for those that are difficult to love, for those who have made mistakes, for those who have hurt people, for those who have hurt you, Jesus gave his life. I cannot remove myself from a pool of sinners and say, thank goodness I'm righteous. Forget all of these people. They've made poor decisions. Let them soak in it. Let them rot in it. I don't want to speak to them. I don't want to see them. I'm not even going to acknowledge them. They've made decisions good for them. You see, I cannot distance myself from who I was before I came to Christ. I cannot come to the point in my life where I view myself as someone who's accomplished great things for God and done great things for God and forget about the person who was on his knees in the midst of his sin, not knowing any way out. And thank God, Jesus Christ intervened. Thank God someone told me about repentance. Thank God someone told me about the cross. Someone at some point looked at me in the midst of all my filth and said, he's worth sharing to. He needs to hear this. Someone sought after me. Friends, Jesus sought after each one of us. In giving his life, he made a way that we could come back to the Father. God sought after us, sending Jesus Christ. He made a way for us to be reconciled, to come back home. He sought us. He searched for us. Who am I to say that someone's not worth sharing to? Who am I to say someone's not sh worth sharing with? They're not worth the search. I, like that shepherd, I, like that woman, must search for what has been lost diligently, with passion, with a fervor. I like that shepherd. I, like that servant, I, like that father, must rejoice like the angels in heaven when a sinner comes to repent. Understanding what God has taken me from and what he has given to me. Something that I don't deserve. What about me? What about you? Are we seeking after the lost? Are we searching for those folks who need to hear the message of There may be someone that you need to call this afternoon. There may be someone in a pew in front of you that you avoid. There may be someone who's even hurt you in the past that you need to share with. Who's worth it? Who's worth it? Pray together. Father, you are mighty. God, in the midst of our sin, Christ gave his life for us. May we never distance ourselves from what you saved us from. May we never take for granted the work of the cross, God. May we develop a firm, may we develop a, a vision, may we develop a heavenly perspective, God. Viewing sinners as valuable, as worth a search, as worth sacrifice, God. Knowing them, 
you sacrificed for us, God. And then we never become complacent. God, that we have the courage to call, to walk, to talk to those folks who need to be sought after, God. Change the way we see things. Move us closer to you, Father. We love you. We trust you. In Christ's name.